23. Well, tomorrow is going to be a little windy with a high of 50 degrees. Saturday will be a perfect day for all the Springfield teams in action with a sunny high of 48. Sunday will be the warmest day of the week with a high of 54. Well, Monday looks sunny with a high of 50. Tuesday's temperatures will drop a bit with a high being 41. The coldest day of the week will be Wednesday with a high of just 39. Next Thursday will be mostly cloudy and warm up a little with a high of 41. Back to you. Thanks for that, Katie. This past weekend, Springfield College had their annual Thanksgiving throwdown party at Judd Gym, and Katie Benoit here has the story. On Friday night, the YMCA Club and the Student Society for Building Diversity held a Thanksgiving throwdown in Judd. Students from Springfield and other colleges came to enjoy good music and dancing. The event was a success and many attended. <laughs> I'm Marcus. And I'm Bernadette. And right now we're at the Thanksgiving Throwdown. It's a big event on campus. It happens every November. It's a huge, it always has a huge outcome. Last year we had 500 people here. So if you guys want to come out, just come out and have a good time. It's always good. And it raises money for both SSBD and Y Club so that we can do events all year long for everybody on campus. Yeah, so we can help you guys, you know, take you guys maybe on trips, have game nights for y'all and different events for you guys to have you, maybe even more parties like this. Yes, that's what we're hoping. We're looking for a spring event, hopefully. Yeah, so it, I mean, it's, a, it's a great time, and hope to see you guys soon at our next event. For SCTV3, I'm Katie Benoit. It's been just as busy this week in the world of entertainment, and as always, our very own Kyle Pegolo has a scoop for us in this week's entertainment. Thanks, Bree. Good evening, Springfield College. Here are this week's top stories in entertainment. The 47th Annual Country Music Awards took place last night, hosted by country stars Carrie Underwood and Brad Paisley, their sixth time running the show. Last night's big winner was, of course, Taylor Swift, who took home three honors out of her record-tying six nominations. Other winners consisted of Florida Georgia Line for their hit song, Cruise, that won them two awards, Blake Shelton, who won Male Vocalist of the Year and Album of the Year, and Keith Urban for his contribution to Tim McGraw's song, Highway Don't Care. Of course, it would not be a great award show without a few surprise appearances. Sean Puff Daddy Combs made an appearance to present an award with Kelly Pickler, and non-country acts like Jason Mraz and Dave Grohl from the Foo Fighters teamed up with the country stars on stage. The nominations for this year's People's Choice Awards have been announced. The hit TV show Glee gets the most nominations out of anyone with eight. Katy Perry gets the most nominations in music with five nods. And Sandra Bullock leads the pack for movie nominations with five as well. To get the full list of all the People's Choice nominations, visit MTV.com. The People's Choice Awards will take place in January of 2014. If you happened to catch the new live episode of The Voice last night, you probably missed CeeLo Green participating in some very interesting behavior. The action took place after Team Adam Levine's Gray performed a very well-received cover of Paramore's Still Into You. When cameras panned to get the reaction of the celebrity judges, CeeLo was caught on camera pulling something from his mouth and blowing two straight puffs of smoke out of his nose. No one is sure what Green was smoking and no one would provide a comment to MTV. But MTV did note that Green has been acting very unusual since the start of the competition. This all comes after Green was recently charged for an ecstasy felony that could put him behind bars for up to four years. TMZ reported today Kanye West pleaded not guilty this morning to charges that he assaulted a photographer outside of LAX airport in July. West was charged with criminal battery and attempted grand theft after allegedly attacking the photographer in front of the airport and grabbing his camera. If convicted for both accounts, West could serve up to a year in prison. Well, to end this week's entertainment segment, our very own Nick Lovett gives us a look at the new video game Batman Arkham Origins. Take a look. Back in 2010, Rocksteady Studios changed the superhero genre of video games forever when they released Batman Arkham Asylum. 
The game had an original story, voice acting by the same voice actors from Batman the Animated Series, Kevin Conroy as Batman and Mark Hamill as the Joker, and a new type of combat called Free Flow. This game truly made you feel like Batman. This was also one of the first in the genre not to be a movie tie-in. In 2011, Rocksteady released a sequel to Arkham Asylum in the form of Batman Arkham City. This installment was more of an open world game and it improved on the mechanics that were so successful in Asylum. City had a great story as well, making the Arkham series arguably the best comic book series of all time. On October 25th, the third installment to the Arkham series was released, Batman Arkham Origins. Origins was not released by Rocksteady, but instead was released by WB Montreal, which some thought to be a detriment right off the bat. Many fans were skeptical because of the new studio, but they had no reason to be. Batman Arkham Origins lives up to the Arkham name, and then some. Origins serves as a prequel to the two previous games, taking place in Batman's second year fighting crime in Gotham City. This means he does not have the trust of Jim Gordon or the rest of the Gotham City Police Department. This also means that the Dark Knight has not met some of his greatest foes yet, but do not worry, he will get acquainted with a few of them as the game progresses. The story of the game is based on Black Mask, a notorious crime lord, putting a bounty on Batman's head on Christmas Eve. This large bounty attracts eight of the world's best assassins, including Bane, Deathstroke, and Deadshot. These eight assassins have the night to kill Batman, which makes for a hell of a night for the Cape Crusader. Some of the assassins are tied to the main story of the game, but others can be taken care of in side missions. Other notorious villains that make appearances in the game are Killer Croc, the Penguin, and of course, the Joker. Croc and the Penguin have relatively minor roles in the game, but it is cool to see them as young villains. The Joker, as per usual, comes in to steal the show. Voice actor Troy Baker takes the place of Mark Hamill as the voice of the Clown Prince of Crime, and he does not disappoint at all. Baker's voice is almost identical to Hamill's, but he seems to have a darker tone to it. The game plays pretty much the same as the two games that came before it, but there are some different tweaks WB Montreal put in here and there. The most notable change comes in the form of the new and improved detective mode. The other changes come in different forms of combat and some different types of gadgets. The side missions in this game are less vast than the ones in Arkham City, but there's still a lot to do once you beat the main story. There are still some assassins to take care of and some black mask related things to do, but the most intriguing ones, for me at least, were the side missions involving Anarchy and Enigma, or the Riddler as he is better known. Batman Arkham Origins does have a multiplayer portion, which is good, but is nothing to write home about. The multiplayer game is separated into two parts, the challenge maps like the ones in Arkham City, and an invisible predator mode that is housed in its own disc. Overall, Batman Arkham Origins is a great game that carries the weight of its title well. The game has an awesome story with voice acting that is just as good as Conroy and Hamill, and this may be sacrilegious, but I actually like Baker's Joker better than Hamill's. The multiplayer portion is forgettable, but can be a fun change of pace. Overall, this is a solid game and one that definitely lives up to expectations. The score of this game, I'll give it a 9 out of 10. Well, thank you, Kyle, for the entertainment and Nick for that package. And now we're going to another episode of Viv's Music Insider, where our very own Vivian Novella will be talking to us about a number of topics inside of the music world. Take it away, Viv. Welcome to another episode of Viv's Music Insider. 30 Seconds to Mars released their new music video for their song, City of Angels, last week. This song is full of beautiful lyrics and is dedicated to the city of Los Angeles. The city of dreamers, lost souls, artists, performers, and everything in between. In this video, we see a more emotional side of entertainers such as Kanye, Lindsay Lohan, James Franco, Selena Gomez, and more, as they open up and spill their feelings about the city that made them who they are today. Let's take a look. I love this city. I love it with all my heart. The City of Angels is where I was able to find myself again, the real me. I wouldn't have anything if it wasn't for the city. The city took my mother, but the city also gave me my child. I came out here and I kind of found a life. I thought it was the most magical place I'd ever been. It was the promised land. People who move to LA are usually the screwed up ones. People who are born and raised here are not quite as bad.
The Something Wicked Music Festival took place in Houston, Texas two weekends ago. Thousands of Halloween crazed festival goers fled to Sam Houston Race Park to see artists like Adventure Club, Tommy Trash, Grizzly, and more. There was even a costume contest where winners received a VIP upgrade, a Something Wicked t-shirt, and even a general admission ticket to Something Wicked 2014. After eight years together making music, the Jonas Brothers announced to the public that they will be breaking up. I think it's safe to say that the Jonas Brothers fans could have seen this one coming after the band announced the cancellation of their tour about a month ago due to a deep rift within the band. Will the Jonas Brothers ever return to the music scene as a group, or has their time come and gone? Only time will tell. Over the weekend, Nicky Romero and Cruella teamed up to release their music video for their hit, Legacy. Once again, Cruella has hit the nail on the head for producing a music video that is full of energy. Let's check it out. That's all I have for you this week. See you next week for another episode of Viv's Music Insider. Thanks for that, Viv. Well, it was yet another wild week of sports in both professional and college. Candace Tibbetts says much more on it and, and more on that too as well, excuse me, in this week's sports segment.